everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be talking about the books that I think you need to read. So I got this video idea from my great friend Hannah over at A Clockwork Reader. I will link her video down below, but basically what I'm going to be doing is talking about some books that I have read recently that I really, really loved and I think you need to read. I don't think this is going to be the only time I'm going to do this video because I think it is a great idea and it gives me a chance to really gush about some books that I've read recently that I don't think I've really gotten the chance to fully shout my love about. I don't really know if that sentence made sense in the end, but I feel like you got the gist of it. Now, there are a bunch of books that I could talk about, but I decided to narrow it down to my top 10. So let's get into it. So the first book that I think that you need to read is one that Hannah and I have in common, and that is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. I haven't actually seen a lot about this book on booktube, which is really a shame because I thought this was a beautiful story and one that a lot of people can probably benefit from. I feel like this is one of those rare gems that booktube kind of skipped over. I think every now and again there's a book that comes out that you don't really see a lot on booktube or really any bookish social media but then I pick it up and I'm like oh my god this book was amazing how is no one talking about it so I feel like this is one of those secret books I don't know if it's just where I'm hanging out in the YouTubes and all of that stuff or in the bookish community but I haven't seen that many people talking about it like sure people are talking about it but not nearly as much as I feel like they should be now just a warning this book does deal heavily with mental illness such as depression and it deals with suicide as a central topic as the main character's mother has just committed suicide and the main character believes that her mother has turned into a bird and that this bird wants her to go to Taiwan to learn more about her mother's heritage and to meet her grandparents who she has never gotten the chance to meet. I feel like this is one of the most honest portrayals of suicide and it deals with that issue in a great way because the whole story, the main character is trying to pinpoint a reason and pinpoint a time that things changed for her mother and it was kind of past that point of no return and this book deals with the fact that there isn't always that pinpoint and oftentimes there really isn't. It's just mental illness and it works in ways that you can't really understand unfortunately. It just paints such an accurate portrait of that experience and of grief in general. I think that if you have gone through a loss and it doesn't have to be apparent or if you have lost anyone by suicide then this is a great book to read because it helps you to understand that and kind of wrap your mind around something that is really difficult to comprehend. The culture that was brought into this story it just brought it to the next level and I just thought it was an amazing book. It was beautifully written and if you read one from this list, actually there's so many I can't even say that, but like please read this one. So The Astonishing Color of After definitely made it on my favorites of all time list and it is not alone because there's another book from this list that has made it on that other list. Let's make a list of how many times I'm saying list, but that book is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is a book that everyone was telling me to read because I really love historical fiction and I talk about it a lot and all of my co-workers at work. I work at a bookstore for context for that, but they had all read this book and were like, it's amazing, like you need to read it, blah 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 blah. And I was like, okay, like it's on the list, I'll get to it eventually. And I had in the back of my mind, everyone has hyped this book up so much that there is no possible way that it can live up to that hype. But it didn't even live up to that hype, it exceeded all that hype. I was blown away by the story and how connected I felt to all of the characters. I literally, I gave it to my entire family. My dad didn't end up finishing it just because it wasn't his cup of tea but my sisters and my mom all ended up reading it and absolutely loving it as well and it's just so honest and so beautiful and it brings you right into the world of these characters and you are alongside them feeling all those feelings so intensely like I was basically sobbing when I listened to the end of the audiobook it was just ridiculous I could not even understand how I became so connected to the characters I don't know when it happened I don't even really know how it happened and I struggled to put my feelings about this book into words but it was just amazing. I'll be kind of brief in my explanation about this book but this deals with two sisters who are living in France during World War II and it kind of jumps around in time to modern day and you're seeing the effects of everything that's happening and information is being revealed to you in a really strategic way and you just grow attached to the characters. That's honestly what drives the story is the characters and their struggles and it's a deeply emotional book and it will make you feel all of the feelings and just a trigger warning for rape with this book because there is a scene that 
that depicts that so if that's a trigger for you then definitely stay away from this or skip over that part but it deals with everything in such an honest way that you feel like Kristen Hanna is like telling her own story and it doesn't feel like fiction. It is based in a true time period but like it feels like you're reading a memoir or something. It was just absolutely beautiful and you really need to read this book. This list is filled with all sorts of genres so this is kind of switching gears here a little bit but the next book is Always Never Yours by Emily Wibberly and Austin Siegeman Broca. This is a love story that is written by a couple that is in love and if that is not a book in itself like I want a book about that like writing a book with your significant other that just sounds adorable. I could never do that because I'm a control freak but also because Jackson doesn't have opposable thumbs. For context for those of you who don't know Jackson is my cat and he is an adorable handsome man and I love him. But anyways this is a love story that is set against the backdrop of a production of Romeo and Juliet and I love Shakespeare so all of the Shakespearean references in here were to die for. But our main character Megan is always the girl before whoever she was dating finds their person so she's kind of used to that she's always kind of that stepping stone and they end up breaking up with her and then finding that person that they end up being with for what seems like forever when you're in high school. So while that obviously does suck she's not really that worried about it she is more concerned with putting all of her energy into trying to be a director. So she wants to apply for this very prestigious directing program but in order to do that one of the stipulants of her application I don't know if that's the right word but I'm gonna go with it but she has to be an actress so she is planning on playing the smallest role possible but instead she ends up getting cast as the lead role of Juliet. So obviously that is the setup for some drama and then there's some romance going on in here. She ends up meeting this guy named Owen who is an aspiring playwright and she agrees to help him with his play in exchange for his help in catching the eye of the sexy new stagehand. So there are so many things going on in this book that it feels like it reads like a Shakespeare play which I think is just perfect. I honestly feel like it's a backstory for Rosalind Rosaline. I never know how to say it but it made it really cool because it reads like its own retelling and the writing was amazing. I just really love this book and I wish that more people would talk about it because I think it was amazing. Next we have a rarity for me and that is a sci-fi book that I really love. I just generally am not the biggest fan of sci-fi but I actually really enjoyed The Thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee. This is a book that I kind of put off reading and I don't know why. I owned it for a really long time before I read it and I think my expectations were pretty low going into it. I thought the concept sounded cool but I just didn't know how the execution would be and considering the fact that I struggle with sci-fi I was like I don't think I'm gonna like it but I was really invested by the end. This is really like a sci-fi twist on Gossip Girl. It is set in Manhattan in the year 2118 so a hundred years from now. I shudder to think what the world is going to be like then but it's not really a dystopian it's just a very techie sci-fi with all the kind of like sci-fi drugs which added a really interesting element because I'd never really read anything like that and I thought it just added another layer to the story but the building I'm getting back to the synopsis because I went off on a tangent there but there is this building where everyone lives in and it goes to a thousand floors and basically where you live determines your societal like your class that's the word that I'm looking for why am I losing my mind right now so I thought that was a really unique concept and all the characters how they interact based on like this literal hierarchy was fascinating to me so you have all sorts of twists and turns like a gossip girl and these teenagers are in way over their heads there is like so much going on this follows a bunch of different characters and honestly if you like gossip girl and even if you don't like sci-fi give this a go because I think you'll really like it I know that by the end I was like how am I so invested in these characters and for me that's what really makes a great book is when things happen at the end that are really shocking and sad and I find myself like oh my god like having a physical reaction because that doesn't usually happen for me so I think that's when an author is successful because they made me care about the characters without me even realizing it. I actually haven't continued with this series yet but I really need to. Next is Ink by Alice Broadway. This is another book that had a lot of differing opinions on it. People seem to either really like it or not like it and I really liked it. I felt like this was taking different elements from a different classic dystopians and making it a new and a different totally unique story. So it's set in this world where tattoos tell the story of your life. So you have all these tattoos on you and they basically every failure that you've had every success it becomes immortalized on your skin which is absolutely terrifying. But when you die there are two things that can happen. You can become this like book your skin becomes this book that your loved ones can go back and read. Terrifying creepy but like you know dystopia or you won't get to be that book and you will literally be forgotten by everyone once everyone who knew you dies. 
also terrifying because Augustus was right when he said that Oblivion is absolutely just boo. But the main character, Leora's father, dies, and she is very sad about it, obviously, but she's taking comfort in the fact that she will be able to revisit his story from his book. But that is until she finds this mark on the back of his neck that basically damns him to be forgotten and not have this book. So she's like, what? And then there are all sorts of elements that come in. I liked the fact that this was a combination of Unwind by Neil Shusterman, The Giver by Lois Lowry, and oh, there's another one. I can't think of it right now, but it takes a bunch of different dystopians and like takes those little elements from it and not in a way where I felt like it was cliche. It was a way that I was like, oh, I see what you did there. Like a little twist on something classic. And I really liked it. I've honestly been struggling with the dystopian genre recently. It was just like such a boom. And now it's kind of like, eh, everything has been done before. But this one definitely added a little bit of something different. Next is another book that has really polarizing opinions. And that is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Christo. So this is also once again, one where I kind of went into it with really low expectations. And I think that's why I don't like to know a lot about books before I go into them. Because the less I know, the more chance I'm going to be surprised and really love it. And I love when I'm surprised by how much I like a book. So this I didn't know going into it, but it is a Little Mermaid retelling. I actually talked about this in my most recent video where I recommended some retellings to you guys. I will link that down below for you guys. But it's a very interesting twist on the Little Mermaid story, much darker. And it makes you think about the original in different ways, which I thought was really cool. It was just a book where I didn't really know what to expect in the entire time. I was like, what is happening? Like, there are so many things. I was also surprised by like how closely it stayed to the original Little Mermaid story while also having that really dark twist on it. So I think it would be really interesting to read the original fairy tale and then read this book and kind of like pick apart where they are similar because then you can really see like where it twisted things. Next is Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. This is one of my favorite books that deals with family as the central topic. So it deals with three siblings who have all been adopted out to different families and they just now when they are teenagers are coming together and meeting each other for the first time. So they all come from different backgrounds. One of them was in foster care and was never adopted and the other two are with these different families that they have been with their whole lives. But it was really interesting to see these three coming together after not knowing each other and they all have different emotional baggage carried with the fact that they were adopted or in the case of the boy he was never adopted. So having that relationship between these three siblings build throughout the book from scratch when they are siblings but like it's kind of like a nature versus nurture thing almost and I just love to see the development because all the characters had a lot of development and there were a lot of secrets between the three of them and you see how they come to trust each other and really build that sibling bond that they never had before. It was really interesting to see the fact that they all came from different backgrounds and see how that affected them and how it affected them as they came to know each other and build that relationship. There were a lot of trust issues and different things that were involved and a major plot point is that they are trying to find their biological mother and seeing them go through that journey together and become closer because of it was just, it was a really fascinating book. I feel like I've said interesting and fascinating a million times but it was just unlike anything I've ever read before and I really enjoyed it. Next is another kind of piratey sea-based book and that is Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. I got this book in an owl crate like a long time ago and I just never picked it up. It wasn't because I didn't want to. I just was kind of like, eh, I don't know. So I ended up listening to the audiobook and I started it at the beginning of a shift and then I ended up finishing it within that shift and it was really enjoyable. Like it was a lot more sexy than I was expecting and it's not like blatantly but there's a lot of angst going on and I found it was a romance that I did care about which is kind of rare which is funny because like my own book there's quite a bit of romance in it but reading about romance is something I struggle with. I don't generally enjoy it so it's refreshing to like this one so much and I really loved the main character. She was just a badass like just what you would expect from the daughter of a pirate king. She was just kind of like I'm taking no shit. I'm just doing whatever like kicking ass and taking names all that jazz and I really liked that her character was powerful on her own but she also ended up developing this relationship that was, I'm not gonna lie, quite enjoyable to read about. But there was more to this book than just the romance, and I think that's why I really enjoyed it. There was a lot of action and adventure elements to it, so it was just a lot of fun to read overall. Next is The Chaos of Standing Still by Jessica Brody. This is another one that, once again, really surprised me because I didn't know what to expect. The cover just looks like it's going to be like a fun, cute, contemporary winter read, but it wasn't that. It had a lot of impact and emotion to it. So this is set over the course of 24 hours on New Year's Day in an airport because all these flights have been grounded. So 
everyone is stuck because there is this huge snowstorm. This is already a really difficult day for a main character because it marks a year officially since her best friend was killed and she is still dealing with that grief and that struggle and she has had this text on her phone that has been unread for that entire year because those are the last words that her best friend would have said to her and she's just not ready to read that text yet. Now the chaos ensues because she runs into this guy and their phones look exactly the same so they accidentally end up switching phones so she's really panicked that that text is going to be read so that panic leads her on a pretty crazy adventure and I don't want to say too much about it because I feel like this is just one of those books that it's best if you go into not really knowing a lot about it but I hope you will read it because it is very emotional have some tissues with you because like it's very sad but really good and the final book on this list that you need to read is My Plain Jane by the Lady Janies aka Cynthia Hand, Jody Meadows, and Brody Ashton. I don't know why I felt the need to throw this book but like it's hot in here. I've been filming for a long time. It just happened. But this is the same trio that wrote one of my favorite books of all time, My Lady Jane, and you don't have to read this one to read this one but I recommend that you do read that one because it is also awesome but this is a retelling of Jane Eyre and it's kind of like Jane Eyre and Ghostbusters had a baby and it's just great. It's tons of fun. One of the most humorous books that I've ever read. It definitely is satirizing Jane Eyre and like the whole gothic thing which I just could really appreciate and it's so ridiculous just like My Lady Jane. It sounds like it wouldn't work but it really does and it is just awesome. So those are all of the books that I have read recently that I think that you really need to read. Let me know if you have read any of these or if they are on your list. But if you enjoyed this video and you want to join the Bookland family then don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post. I post new videos every Wednesday and Friday. You can also follow me on all of my social media, all of my handles and links and all of that stuff will be down below for you guys. So thank you so so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!